Okay. This is the sixth time I've tried recording, so hopefully this goes well. Hello, and I wanted to... Today I wanted to go over the, the setups I've put together for the Nakana Prime. I would have brought this out sooner, but I was having issues with, fa with my family, and I also got a broken rib in the last couple of weeks, so... Uh, yeah, I've been a bit busy, so... Anyways, moving on. Since the Nakana Prime is about to be vaulted in a couple of days, I wanted to go over a setup, well, three setups that I put together. One for noobs, the other is for the milestone after, say, after, P after the players complete the second dream quest, and then a veteran setup, which you would... You get what I mean. A veteran setup is if you have every single mod and you... Well, this, that's more or less my personal build, and you can change it at, at your own at your own dis at your own will. But anyway, this I just wanted to sort of give builds that would help, and like depending on a person's situation. That's my veteran sub. We'll go back to that soon. This is my new friend sub. Going out of the mods, we got pressure point, reach, organ shatter, true steel, berserker, fever strike, shocking touch, and relentless combination. The most difficult mod here would pr would be Berserker, but you could ha you have a chance to get that from doing like the basic Tower One Fishers, because it drops from the Corrupted. I think it's the Ancient, if I remember correctly. Not not quite. Sh don't quote me on that. But you can always check the Codex for the drop location of Berserker. However, one mod that's just there for just is no reason. It's just Reach. It's a good mod to have on any weapon, but for Nakanas, I personally don't think it's very needed. It's like, if you're lucky and you get your hands on this from Marina Earth, then just slap this on, because this would help you way more than Reach would. Trust me on that, because if you look at the wiki, the multiple condition overload effect is a bit nuts, per se. I'll point. I'll leave a link to the video of that MC Gamer CZ did for status effects and condition overload. On that note, that brings me to the reason why I'm doing this, because I looked over other videos like Rosheim's Why Would You Use series, Bows Phoenix's Watching in Action, Headshots Let's Max, and MC Gamer CZ's Quick Look. I they only show one build, and that's pretty much if the veteran build. I mean, sure, it's their personal builds, but their builds are more or less for quote unquote veterans. So that, and that's pretty much what my set for the Nakana Prime will do. But I wanted to make these builds just so it gives like newer players an idea of how to mod their weapons under the right circumstances. Or depending on their on the weapon in question, so the Kana Prime. This is my new friendly setup. Let me show off its build. I would I was testing this out with Excalibur, but I completely forgot that his passive works on the Kanas. And also my internet kind of crashed, so I'm having to. I only just got back to the simulacrum. This is a level 150 corrupted bomb bud. As you might expect, it won't do as well, but it does fairly okay. I'm not used I normally use the block combo for on Spline Justice, but it ragdolls too much, so I'm just gonna be using the basic the button mash combo. So you see it's taking a fair while, but once the corrosive procs start kicking in, it does okay. Just remember this is a new friendly setup. It it's not meant for late game, but I wanted to show it's in the most extreme circumstance. So I've already got a three times combo multiplier, and it is taking a long time to kill this guy. But you can you'll notice the trend that as I go higher in the like as I go further through the builds, you'll notice that it takes a lot easier. Actually, I'm curious. Before we move on, I wanted to see how well this build would do if I were using my Son 
this this banshee build I got. It's like my banshee's built for sonar, so let's just spam it a few times, get the build going. This ragdoll from the block combo. It's doing pretty well. Ah, nuts. But yeah, this this test was just out of curiosity because I wanted to see how well this build would do with a banshee. And still not doing very well, I must say, but this is the new friendly set, so I'm, I'm a bit impressed for a new friendly set. This is doing pretty well. And that's just like with a basic Banshee build. Now on to the second dream setup. This one, compared to the new friendly setup, will do way better. For this setup, I've got Pressure Point, Fever Strike, Shocking Touch, Drifting Contact. This will be one of the more annoying mods to get because it drops from medium tier nightmare missions. But I can't remember exactly where, the, like what locations drop this. I know two off by heart, which are Lua and the Kuva Fortress. But you get those a bit late in the star chart, so don't try and go. Like Lua, those two aren't the only places to get it. If I remember correctly, one other place is the Void. So, you can always go to the Void if you unlock Nightmare Missions there. Then for the bottom row, we got Blood Rush. This mod you can get from the Orc and Moon Spy Mission. The Orc and Moon, as I said earlier, is just named Lua. So, if you go to Pavlov on Lua, you have a, and you do the Spy Mission there, and you get all three vaults, you have a chance to get this mod. From the new printing set, we got Berserker, True Steel, and Organ Shatter. The reason True Steel is here, because even though Blood while Blood Rush is, is because the f effect Blood Rush has is it takes your final modded critical chance. So it takes the, so if it treat, it doesn't take your base. So like since I have a 32% critical chance with True Steel on, it will multiply 32, my 32% critical chance by 1.65. Since that max rank 165% means you're just multiplying your critical chance by 1.65 and adding that on top. I have I don't have a calculator on me, but with that with this much critical chance you're gonna hit orange crits fairly quickly. And that will in turn help Berserker proc quicker. And these two monsters just like in the event you get Corrosive proc going, this will do quite well. It's a solid setup for if you could blood rush from the spy from the spy mission on Lua. So Let's just show it off. This is level 150, and even though it's not a veteran setup, it will still do fairly well. I'm avoiding using the block combo because it does have a lot of ragdoll to it. And the last time I tested it, you saw it just sent enemies off the map. See, it's like compared to the new friendly setup, it's already doing fairly well. And this is like, and bombards aren't weak to corrosive. They do lose armor, but they're more weak. To, bombards are weaker to radiation damage. As you saw, that took way less time than the new friendly setup. And now my curiosity is back again. I want to see how this does with Banshee. Sorry, I'm trying to hold back a burp. <laughs> Let's see. That should be enough. The stacking crits are, are kicking in. See, we already got orange crits, and just look, this is doing us very well. So if you don't if you don't have a veteran setup, this will do you just fine. And I my, and I'm only using the basic ones. I don't have primed mods in here. If I if you got your hands on uh, on prime mods. Which will, be, which I'm going to show in the veteran setup. You're definitely going to do very well. So that, and so that was my second dream setup. Now on to my veteran setup. 
For this, I got Condition Overload, Relentless Combination, Voltaic Strike, Drifting Contact, Blood Rush, Prime Pressure Point, Prime Fury, and Virulent Scourge. If you don't have Prime Fury, you could swap that out for Berserker and that would be a bit way more effective. But if you do have this mod, yeah, it's well worth maxing out. The reason I've got Condition Overload here over Organ Shatter is because of the multipliers Condition Overload has when you stack status procs. The description doesn't exactly say this, it's like, but the more the multipliers are a bit nuts. I'll put a link to MC Gamer CZ's video on status procs because I'd rather not go over that. I just wanted to go over my veteran set, and I think he explains it way better than I do. Unless you want me to go over the status procs and how it works, then I'll be happy to do the research, but for now, this is just my Nakana Prime video. Compared to the other two setups, this is obviously going to do way better, or slightly close to the second dream setup. But this is more or less my personal build for Nakana Prime. So you can see it's doing very well, and Relentless Combination is quickly building up that combo multiplier. I wasn't keeping track of the swings, but thanks to the slash ticks, it was doing fairly well. If anything, it was probably the one of the better setups I've done. Anyways, since the Kana Prime is about to be vaulted, I highly recommend getting this weapon. Because, depending on when you... Hold on, let me just quickly check something. It's been ages since I got Nakana Prime, so I am not sure when it, what its mastery lock is. Can I see it from here? No. Oh, uh, I think if I remember correctly, its mastery lock was around seven. I could, I can be wrong, because I might be thinking of the Fregger Prime, because that also has a mastery rank lock of seven. But, anyways, if you get Nakana Prime. It is well worth it. I'll be going over the Spear of Prime tomorrow because that's also another weapon that's about to be vaulted in a couple of days. So, yeah, I will see you for that video. Bye bye.